Hello and welcome to this course on using ggplot in Python, where you'll learn how to visualize your data using the Plot9 library, which is a part of the famous R programming library called ggplot2. Now, first, you might wonder why would you even want to build data visualizations? What's the point in doing this? If you have statistics, you might say. So let's look at four data sets here. This is a famous example that shows four different data sets here labeled with one, two, three, and four. And you can see their summary statistics are very similar to each other, uh, if not the same. You can pause this and compare the different data sets. And you'll see, for example, here in the first line, the count between the first and the third data set are exactly the same. And there's a lot of other similarities like this. So you might assume that these data sets represent similar data to each other. But if you go ahead and start visualizing this, and let me just put some color on here so that you know which plots going to refer to which data sets, then you can see right away that these data sets are very different from each other. So this is the first one, the second one, third one, and the fourth one. And the distribution of the data points is completely different for each of them, even though they have very similar or the same descriptive statistics. Now, this example is called the Anscombe's Quartet, which is a famous example that shows you that you can't solely rely on the descriptive statistics of your data sets because they might hide quite a lot of variability in there. And something that's very hard to see if you just look at the data like this is that you can see it very easily by building some descriptive visualizations. And Plot9 applies a grammar of graphics approach to building these visualizations that makes it very powerful and easy to use. And so I hope you're going to enjoy working with it when you learn about it in this course. Now, the course is going to walk you over, first of all, what is a grammar of graphics, a term that I just mentioned before, which is a way of building graphics and how to do this in a layered approach. Then you're going to get set up using either an Anaconda or a virtual environment. And then you're going to start talking about the layers that this grammar of graphic applies, with the first one being the data layer. Then you're going to talk about aesthetics as well as geometric objects. These three being the most important layers that you need to work with when you work with Plot9 or ggplot for that matter. And then you're also going to learn about a couple of other layers that you can use to make your visualizations even more descriptive and more meaningful. And these are statistical transformations, scales and coordinate systems. And then finally, you're also going to learn about how you can apply different themes that are built in in Plot9 to change the look and feel of your plots and learn how to export these graphics to separate files so you, don't, you can use it also elsewhere. And this covers the extent of the course. I hope you're going to enjoy it and learn something from it. And in the next lesson, you're going to get started by hearing about what is the grammar of graphics and how is it applied in ggplot and plot9. See you there. Okay, you'll get started by learning about what a grammar of graphic even means. And this term comes from an influential book that was written a while ago. And someone else, Hadley Wickham, he created a library in the R language that he called a layered grammar of graphics. And this library was called ggplot, or ggplot2 is the currently used version of it. And plot9, the library that you will be working with now, is essentially a port of ggplot to Python. So it applies the same structure and the same approach of using a layered grammar of graphics to represent graphics. But yes, it is written for Python, so it will be easy for you to use and integrate in your Python apps. Now, what is a layered grammar of graphics? Essentially, you can think of it as putting more and more layers on top of each other to create a graphic. That's also why it's called the layered grammar of graphics. And there's three important layers. Uh, there's a couple more, but you're going to learn about these three primarily, which is data as the first base layer, then aesthetics on top of that, which are mappings from the data to specific visible elements in the graph, and then geometric objects, which is how to represent the data points. Let's look at these in a bit more detail. When you think of data, you might just think of a table like this, which is a common way to represent the data, which consists of rows and of columns and has these different data items in there. Now, if you would just apply the data layer to your plot nine graph, then all you would end up with is a gray square. 
So this gray square already has the data in there, but there's no information on how to display the data. So Plot9 can't do anything more than with it than just telling you, okay, there's some data. But you do need to establish this first layer of data so that you can move on to the second layer, which is aesthetics. And here, as I mentioned before, this is about mapping values that exist in your data to things that you can perceive on the graph. Most importantly, those will be the X position and the Y position. And I'll show you in the next slide. But I just want to mention that there's a couple of other layers as well in the layered grammar of graphics. For example, scales and coordinate system. There's different ones that you can choose for these as well. But Plot9 just applies some good defaults for these for you. So you, don't, you usually don't have to worry about those unless you really want to fine tune your graph. So the most important things are mappings to X and Y position. And if you think about the data set that you looked at before, you could pick out a lot of things from this data set, but let's say you're going to map this column class to the X axis, and you're going to map this column here, the highway miles that a car can drive per gallon as the Y axis. And then... If you apply this layer, your plot nine graphic would look like this. You see, it makes already more sense. And you see the highlights here of the mapping. So here's the Y column that got mapped over here. And it put in the name of the column and also the scales. And then on the X axis, you can see that it mapped the class correctly. So the X and the Y axis got mapped in this concept of the aesthetics. Again, this was, you have something in the data set and you want to tell Plot9 how to display it in the graph. So this looks already more like a graph, but it's still missing the data points. And this is the third important piece of the puzzle, which is the geometric objects. And these geometric objects tell Plot9 how you want the data points to be represented. So in this case, you're telling it that you want it to be little black circles for each data point that's in the data set. And with this, you have a complete graph that makes sense. You have a y-axis with a mapping, you have an x-axis mapping, and then you have the data underlying all of it, and then the top layer of the geometric objects telling you how to display that data. And here you can read about how SUVs, for example, can't drive a ton of kilometers on the highway per gallon that they use. So their fuel consumption is much worse than, for example, this subcompact car that sits up all the way up there. Okay, as a quick recap, what you need to build a plot with Plot9 is three layers of the layered grammar of graphics, which is first the data, then aesthetics, and then third geometric objects. And this is the quick introduction for what is a grammar of graphics. And next up, you'll get set up on your system with Anaconda or a virtual environment. Time to get set up to get started with the tutorial. I will be using the Anaconda Python distribution throughout this tutorial, but I'm also going to show you in this video how to do it both with Anaconda or just with plain Python. So first, if you want to use Anaconda, you will have to head over to their website and download an installer. You can get one for Windows, Mac OS, or Linux. Just choose your platform, download the appropriate installer, and follow the installation instructions. Once you're done with this, you can go to your terminal, and then you can create a new Conda environment. You can do that by saying Conda create, and then dash dash name, and then you can give the environment a name. I will call it Plot9. But that's just the name, so you could use anything else as well. Press enter and then agree that it should be installing all of this stuff. So the environment has been created. Now I can activate it. And I can do this by running the command conda activate and the name of the environment. So we'll say conda activate plot9. And once you see this prompt here on the side, before your prompt, the plot9 name of your environment then you're inside of the environment so and then you can install the packages that you need for this course and those are going to be just two you're going to need plot nine and jupyter notebooks so i can say conda install plot nine and jupyter press enter and then just wait for this installation to complete 
So it's got to download a bunch of stuff. Oh, I will have to say yes. <laughs> and then you see that it starts downloading all of the packages that it needs. Those are some dependencies for either Jupyter Notebooks or for Plot9. You will see that there's a bunch of popular Python libraries like SciPy or Pandas that are going to get installed as well because Plot9 actually relies on a lot of these things and does its plotting based on a mixture of Pandas and Matplotlib, but abstracts on top of that. So the installation is done. You might see a bit more because I've done this before. I've downloaded some of the libraries before, so I didn't have to download everything. But once it tells you done and brings back the prompt, then you're good. And then you're ready to get started if you want to do it with the Anaconda distribution. Now, let me deactivate this and show you how to do it without Anaconda. So if you want to use the built-in Python virtual environment module, then you need to follow a similar process. You don't need to download Anaconda. And then you just need to create a virtual environment using the VNV module. And then you also need to activate it and install Plot9. So let's look at this in the terminal. First, I need to create the virtual environment, which I will do with saying Python-M VNV, use the VNV module and create a virtual environment in a folder called VNV. You can also give it a name. You can say dash dash prompt and then give it a name just like you did with the condo environment. So I'm going to call this one also plot nine. Press enter and then wait for this to complete, which was pretty quick. And then I also need to activate it. So I'm going to say source, go to this folder, bin folder and the activate script. And when I execute this activate script, then the virtual environment has been activated. Now, once you see this here on the side, you can go ahead and say pip install plot9 and Jupyter. Press enter. And again, you're just now going to have to wait for this installation to complete. And then you're ready to go. I'm not going to wait this out now because I'm, I'm going to be using Anaconda. But with running these commands in an activated virtual environment, you're going to be set up to get started working on this just as well as you would with Anaconda. Once all your installations are complete, you can create a new folder for your project. So let's say I'm there inside of documents. I'm going to make a new folder called plot9. And then I'm also going to move there. OK, and I have a new empty folder called plot9. Inside of here, I'm going to start the Jupyter Notebook. Now, once the server is up and running, your browser will bring up an empty site that looks approximately like this. And in here, you can create a new Python 3 notebook by clicking on New and then Python 3. And once you're here, you're ready to get started with the first lesson. And that's all about the setup. In the next lesson, you're going to start looking at the first layer of the grammar of graphics, the data layer, and you'll learn about it at hands of running through a couple of examples in a Jupyter Notebook. Before we dig into this layer by layer, I want to give a quick throwback to this ANSCOMS quartet that you learned about in the first lesson of this course. Now, here's some data that makes up this four different types of plots that all have the same statistical values, but very different plots. And I want to show you how quickly you can plot these using plot nine. Now you can get this data off of the description of this course lesson if you want to run it as well, but you can also just watch. So I have to import pandas explicitly because it comes as a dependency with plot nine, but it's not automatically imported, of course. And now you could see I have these data sets and if you describe them, you would see what we saw before. I could say you could compare these values and see that they're very similar, the statistical values, if not the exact same. But now, if you take a different approach and you actually go ahead and visualize these data sets, 
using plot9 in this case, you can very quickly see a difference. So I need to import from plot9 the ggplot, the aesthetic, and the geometrical object. With ggplot, with this first one, I can create, I can add the data layer, so to say. And this is the syntax that you can use. You can say ggplot, pass in the data. So here I'm passing in the pandas data frame as the data layer. Then you're adding the aesthetics layer where you define the mappings from X is going to map to X here and Y is going to map to Y1 in this case. So you, we want to plot this first data set. And now if I execute this, you can see the plot popping up here. And it looks a certain way, okay. One plot alone doesn't tell you much yet. But now if you make the second one, in the same way, I'm just going to say to G plot, but pass in the second data set. I'm going to say plus aesthetics, where I'm going to map X to X and Y to Y2 in this case. And finally, you need to define the geometric objects. And this is just going to be a point plot. So if I run this, you right away see that this data set has a completely different distribution of the values actually. So something that was basically impossible to see, but just the statistical descriptions, you can very easily distinguish by a quick plot that doesn't take more than one import line and then three lines of code for each plot. So you can play around with this a bit more. Also, you can plot the other ones. You can plot number three and number four and compare them. And if you want, research a little how you can change the colors and, and size of these dots. So see you in the next lesson where you're going to start looking at the data layer in a bit more detail.